Howdy guys, IndiePixel here, and today we are going to be talking about how to group with VEX. All right, so we're going to walk through a bunch of different ways of how to group with VEX, and we are going to build this chessboard, not the little pawn pieces or anything like that. I just put that there for fun, <laughs> but we're going to go and learn how to use grouping to make this chessboard. I know it's not very complicated, but if you're new to VEX, learning how to group using VEX is very important. All right, so before I get started, I wanted to do a quick shout out to all the Patreon members that I have now on the IndiePixel Patreon page. All right, so I want to say a big thanks to David Tavon, Jason Willis, Max Crow, Michael Smith, and Mitch Harold. I really appreciate all the support. And if you guys are interested in the IndiePixel Patreon page, go and check it out. The link should be on the screen now. All right, so with that, let's get started with grouping in VEX. All right, so let's go and make our own chessboard. So I'm going to go create a new geometry node, and we'll call this the video board. All right, and I'm going to turn off this board and hit Shift Z on the keyboard to bring up my groups. And I want to display all my pawns. We could actually just hit the little display button there and then hide those guys. We don't need to see all that right now. All right, cool. So I'm going to jump inside this geometry node, and let's just drop down a grid. Let's just start there. We're going to keep this relatively basic so we learn the fundamentals of how to group stuff with VEX. All right, so with this grid in place, we have some geometry, and this geometry is made up of points and primitives. All right, so what we want to do is we want to go and learn how to group certain primitives in this case. All right, it works for, for points too. So let's drop down a wrangle node. All right, so you can do an attribute wrangle node, and we're going to switch it over to primitives. Now, if you just want the quick way, you can just do a primitive wrangle. All right. And all that that's doing is just switching this over to primitives there for you. I'm just so used to dropping down an attribute wrangle node and setting this to whatever I need. All right. So uh, first things first, what I want to do is go in here and just start to select some stuff. So really quick way to do this. I'm going to say if the at primnum. All right. So this is going to store the primitive number currently. All right, for each of the primitives, because remember, this wrangle node is going to loop through all each of these prim primitives here. All right, so I'm going to say if your primnum is less than 10, then we want to put you into a group. All right, so the first way to go about doing this is to use the set prim group. So we can set set prim group. And if we were to highlight this guy and hit F1 on the keyboard over here, that will pop open the help here inside of Houdini. There we go which is very, very handy to have because then we could see all the arguments that we need. So in this case, we have quite a few arguments, really. We have the geo handle, all right? And that is going to be the geometry that we want to sample from. And then we have a string, that's going to be the name of the group. And then we have an integer, and that's going to be the current primnum that we want to put into this group. We have a value, and usually this is between, this is zero or one because we either want to be in a group or we don't want to be in a group. And then we have a mode where we can set it. And we have a bunch of different types of strings that we could put in there. We could use the set, which will just set it, or we could toggle it. So we can toggle it on and off, basically. Okay, so with that, what I'm gonna do is type in zero because that's the geometry that is coming into this first input right here. And then I wanna give it a name. This is gonna be called my group. And we're gonna give it the current prim num. So we're gonna say prim num. And I keep putting the capital there. There we go. And then we want to set it to one, so we set it. And we want to tell it to set that group. And I need to make sure this is correct. There we go. Cool. So now we can go and switch over in the geometry spreadsheet to look at our group. And you can see that all of the primitives that are less than 10 are now in this group. We can also go up here and take a look at our group itself. So we can highlight it and see that zero through nine is in that group. So if we were to do something like less than or equals, we now include 10. All right, so that's one way to do that. Very cool. Let's do something a little bit different now. We're gonna say, we're gonna do the shorthand version of this. So I'm gonna say if primnum, the current primnum that we're on is less than or equal to 10, then what I wanna do is I wanna do use the short form for this. So I'm gonna say I at group underscore my group is equal to one. All right, and you can see it does the exact same thing. Super cool. All right, so now we have this my group. 
So that's just your short form. Instead of typing out uh, set prim group and typing out all the arguments, we can just use that short form for that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and I need to get some sort of alternating pattern. So I want to select every other primitive in here to create our chessboard. So we're just going to change the condition up here. We're going to say uh, if at prim num, we're going to use the modulo 2. All right, if that's true, then we're going to put every other or e all the odd primitives basically are going to go in there. And so just to make this a little bit more clear, I'm going to say I at group odd. These are all the odd primitives. So there we go. So now we get this checker pattern. Pretty cool. And we can come up here too and we can create a channel or an integer channel. We can say we're going to just call this mod. So we can change that value. So you can see what different kinds of patterns you can get by just doing that little bit of math. Super cool. Modulo is very powerful when working in your procedural modeling workflows. I use it all the time. All right, so if you're not an odd primitive, then we want to put it into another group. So I'm going to say I at group underscore even is equal to one. So now we've got two groups. We've got the even and the odds. And let's actually pull this all the way over. So there we go. So now we have an alternating pattern. Now this is really, really cool because what I can do is I can come in here now and assign the color to each one of those groups. So if I go to color and we're going to go and pump that guy into there and I'm going to select all the odds. I'm going to set our color to primitive and I'm going to set this guy to, you know, not totally black, but a, a black. There we go. And then we can come and create another one of these. So I just hold down alt and left click and drag to create a copy of that color node. And I'm going to set this guy to the even. All right, so we're going to say even. And these guys are going to be like an off-white. Cool. So now we have the beginnings of our checkerboard. Now, a couple other things I want to note. Uh, if we come up here to the side effects help, you can see all of the VEX functions that are related to grouping with VEX. All right, and there's actually quite a few. So currently, we're just using the, the shorthand version. But we did cover these guys right here. So you can see that you can group your primitives. You can group your points. All right. And the point and the vertex groups work exactly the same way. The arguments are exactly the, the same here. Okay. But let's go and take a look at some of these other guys before we go and finish up our chessboard here. So end primitives group. This will actually get the number of elements in a group. This is very useful if you want to query basically how many primitives you have in a group. You could do some sort of math there, some sort of if else conditional statement type of thing. So let's drop down an attribute wrangle node. And this time I'm going to put this on to a detail. All right. So let's go and put this onto a detail just so we have a single attribute to look at. All right. So let's go and say that I at um, total prims or total, we'll say odd prims. How about that? Say odd prims is equal to our n prim count or n primitives group. And we want to feed it the geometry and the name of the group. So we want to query the odd group. And look at that. We now have 40 primitives in our odd prims detail attribute. Now, if I want to do the evens, it'd be exactly the same. So we just change this to even. And we'll change this guy to even. Look at that. We now have 41 primitives in even. Now let's say you wanted to go and you wanted to find out all the indices or the numbers for each one of those primitives. So I want to get a list of all the primitives that are in this group. This is great because I, I know the total number of primitives that are in those groups. What if I want the actual numbers of all the primitives in that group in one list, one array? So to do that, if we come back to our documentation over here, you can see that we can get the list of point and primitive numbers. So we can expand the prim group. Awesome. So let's go and test that out. So for this to work, we need to do an I, and then we need to use the square brackets because we're making an array. And we're going to say at prim list. Let's just call it that. Or actually, let's stick to our naming convention. We'll do odd. There we go. So now I want to use the expand prim group, and we're going to give it zero and the group name. Oh, look at that. We now have a list of all those primitives, all the numbers in the odd group. All right, so we looked at how to create 
a group using the long form and the short form. And we also looked at how to get the number of primitives in a group, as well as the list of all those primitives that are, that are in that group. Very handy stuff. All right, so from there, let's go and finish up our checkerboard here, or our chessboard, actually. All right, so with that, I am going to, that's pretty much good for the board itself. Let's go and just duplicate this grid over here, and I'm going to keep it at the same size, but I'm going to make a two by two. And I am then going to do a divide. Let's just have a little bit of fun here and see how quickly we can make a chessboard. All right, so I'm going to get rid of, let's do a blast, and let's get rid of primitive zero. There we go. It leaves me with the triangle. I'm going to use this as the profile for the wood on the outer part of the, the chessboard. All right, and then let's go and drop down a sweep node here. And let's get this guy all hooked up. So we need to go and get this oriented correctly. So let's drop down a transform node now. And let's rotate this 90 degrees, I believe. Yeah, very cool. So now we got that, but I need it to actually sit, the bottom here to sit on the top of the grid there. So let's do, let's utilize actually a new node here. We're gonna do the game dev axis align here. And there we go, look at that. By default, it'll set it up right in the center there. And now I wanna set up the X axis so that it's also at the min. So now we have those guys right there. Look at that, pretty cool. So let's go and do a transform and let's just scale this down a little bit like so and scale it down in the Y. I don't need, you know, a huge shape there or anything like that. Let's go and do a poly bevel to this. So I'm just going to bevel all those points. Let's get that bevel there. There we go. Very cool. And I'm going to set this to points like so. And then we're going to go and make sure that we save this. Sometimes I find that the polybevel will crash Houdini. So always important to save when you're using the polybevel. Cool. So there we go. We now have our profile. Let's go and just skin with auto closure when we have the outside now. So let's do a color for this guy here and set it to primitives. And that's because I'm putting all the color on primitives over here as well. Let's move all these guys down here. So you want those to be the same, so that way when we go and merge these two, uh, we don't get any sort of conflicting attributes. All right, let's set this to some sort of, you know, kind of a cherry wood type of color. A little bit darker. Nice. Okay, so now I'm just going to select both these guys. I'm going to hold down Alt on the keyboard. I'm going to select one of the outputs and then drag it out, and that will automatically create a merge node for me. And look at that. We now have a chessboard. Pretty cool. Nice and quick too. All right, so that was a little bit of modeling fun and some VEX fun, all in one video. How about that? All right, so I'm gonna basically leave you guys there, and if you haven't, go and check out the IndiePixel Patreon page. I'm adding new content. It just started up, so things are getting going. I really, really want to thank all the patrons that have already subscribed. Really appreciate it. it makes everything possible. Thanks so much, guys.